Tomo News presents Wireless Data Transmission. How to make a Wi-Fi booster out of an empty aluminum can. So, you want to know how to boost your Wi-Fi signal so you can catch up on Game of Thrones, right? Follow these steps and turn an ordinary can into a Wi-Fi antenna, guaranteed to boost your signal. Here's what you need. A wireless router, a clean aluminum can, a box cutter, and a small piece of sticky tack. Cut off the bottom of the can. Then cut along the middle of the can in a straight line. Carefully open up the middle piece of metal by bending it like a radar dish. Insert your Wi-Fi antenna router into the hole of the can, then stick the base of the can to the router with a small piece of sticky tack. Now it's time to test how much your Wi-Fi signal is boosted. Trash can in India provides access to Wi-Fi signals. Startup company ThinkScream developed a solution to the littering and internet connectivity problems in India, a trash can that offers Wi-Fi. ThinkScreen's Wi-Fi generating trash can was inspired by the music festival experience where littering and lack of Wi-Fi are notorious issues. The bin, a roughly four feet tall box made from acrylic and equipped with a Wi-Fi router, was created to inspire people to toss their garbage somewhere else besides the floor. When garbage is placed into the trash can, the trash sets off a sensor at the base of the bin. The trash can then generates a passcode users can enter into their mobile devices. From within a 164 feet radius of the bin, users are able to enjoy 15 minutes of Wi-Fi connectivity. ThinkScreen wanted to create a Wi-Fi network powered by garbage and dispersed a number of these smart bins throughout festival areas. They aim to expand this concept throughout other cities. The project is currently being tested at events and colleges. Li-Fi could replace Wi-Fi as faster internet delivery system. A new form of internet data delivery is making its way to the market and it might replace Wi-Fi in the coming years. Li-Fi or Life Fidelity uses LED light bulbs to send information and theoretically can deliver internet access a hundred times faster than Wi-Fi. LED light bulbs emit visible lights, which is a constant stream of photons. When the current is manipulated to create slight fluctuations, a photo detector device can pick up the pulses to convert them into an electrical current. However, because Li-Fi uses only visible light, it does not work through walls, nor will it work outdoors in the sunlight. In the future, light bulbs could become wireless hotspots and could be utilized on aircraft and in other places where radio signal interference is an issue. Due to its limitations, initial usage of the technology may be restricted to crowded urban areas or in areas where Wi-Fi usage may not be safe, such as hospitals. New York to replace payphones with free Wi-Fi hotspots. New York City's public payphones, where Clark Kent morphs into Superman and where people can shelter from the rain, will soon be a thing of the past, as now here come free Wi-Fi hotspots. As part of a plan called Link NYC, New York will replace payphones with Wi-Fi hotspots that stand 9.5 feet high and are less than a foot wide. The kiosk can serve up to 250 devices within a 150-foot radius. More can be added in high-traffic areas. They will double as charging stations where users can also access city services and interactive maps and dial 911, the city's 311 helpline, and make free domestic calls. The service will be 20 times faster than the city's average home internet speeds. Communication between devices is eliminated to prevent peer-to-peer -peer security threats. The kiosks are expected to generate $500 million in advertising revenue for the city in 12 years, funds that will be used to fund the setup of the service. The first Link NYC will be rolled out by the end of 2015. 10,000 kiosks will be installed throughout the city. City Bridge, the consortium that was awarded the project, says it will maintain three old-school Superman phone booths on West End Avenue. Google tests Project Loon Internet Balloons in Australia. Google is planning to conduct the latest test of the high-altitude balloons it hopes will provide internet access to remote areas in Australia. The Project Loon balloons float around 12 miles above ground. A specialized internet antenna on the ground sends signals to the balloons. The signal is then sent from the receiving balloon to other nearby balloons, creating a network in the stratosphere. The signal is then relayed to a ground station connected to a local internet provider, 
which provides internet connections throughout the balloon network, covering an area larger than 600 square miles per balloon. The project is especially attractive for developing countries who would be able to provide internet access without having to invest in expensive underground fiber cables. Students from China's Fudan University have successfully invented a method of wireless internet connectivity which uses cheaper components than Wi-Fi. The new standard has been dubbed Li-Fi and uses LED lights instead of radio waves. Data can be transmitted over wire to the LED light, which then transmits Li-Fi signals to up to four devices simultaneously. An LED light blinks millions of times per second, sending a binary signal by blinking on for one and off for zero. The signal transmits information in a manner similar to Morse code to computers equipped with special optical receivers. This method allows greater data transmission speed than can be achieved using current Wi-Fi standards. The components are also cheaper than those used in Wi-Fi devices. Li-Fi relies on line of sight between transmitter and receiver, meaning it can complement Wi-Fi networks but cannot replace them where line of sight transmission is not possible. Promoters of Li-Fi aim to replace radio transmission in places where radio communication is limited or where radio signals could interfere with other systems, such as airports and hospitals. SpaceX plans to launch thousands of internet satellites. SpaceX has filed an application with the U.S. Federal Communications Commission to launch thousands of satellites in order to provide high-speed internet coverage worldwide. SpaceX's satellite system consists of two sub-constellations of space stations. The first, known as the LEO constellation, would be comprised of 4,425 satellites in an orbit of at least 1,150 kilometers above the Earth. Each satellite can provide service up to 43.95 degrees away from Boresite. The second, VLEO constellation, would include 7,518 satellites, orbiting about 335.9 kilometers above the Earth. Each satellite can provide service of up to 51.09 degrees from Boresite. The satellites in the LEO constellation can cover approximately 4.5 million square kilometers, while those in the VLEO constellation can cover less than one-tenth of that area. The system is designed to provide broadband and communication services for private and professional users worldwide. The deployment of the satellites is expected to begin in 2019 and be completed by 2024. Worldwide Wi-Fi networks at risk of crack attacks. If you're sitting in a coffee shop watching this on your phone, you might want to think twice. Wi-Fi networks worldwide could contain a security flaw that lets hackers disrupt internet traffic. Experts call it a crack attack and say it's a fundamental flaw in wireless security techniques with Apple, Android and Windows software all vulnerable to some extent. A hacker in range of a Wi-Fi network would be able to load viruses onto the network, read and gather communications like passwords, credit card numbers, and photos sent. Researchers suggest only connecting to secured Wi-Fi networks and avoiding unsecured networks like those in hotels, coffee shops, and public spaces. Most banking and online shopping websites use HTTPS, an encryption technique that protects against crack attacks. Security analysts also suggest updating your router, although updates for crack attacks may not be available yet. Scientists at MIT have developed a low-cost form of X-ray vision using Wi-Fi signals. The technology, christened YV, uses a low-power Wi-Fi signal and its reflections to track the movements of individuals, even when they pass behind a wall. YV uses two transmitters and a single receiver. The second transmitter's signal is the inverse of the first. Any identical reflections, such as from static objects, therefore cancel each other out, leaving only moving signals. The signals can show when a subject is moving away from and towards the receiver. YV's inventors believe the technology could one day be used for a range of applications including search and rescue operations in disaster areas and by police to identify the number of suspects in a building before a raid. The device is also capable of tracking gestures such as the waving of an arm. A team of computer scientists at the University of Washington have developed a gesture control technology which makes use of existing Wi-Fi signals and needs no visual sensors. 
WeC uses a modified receiver such as a router to measure subtle differences in the Wi-Fi signal frequency caused by people's movements, known as the Doppler effect. The Wi-Fi signals and the reflections travel through walls, meaning the gestures can still be captured by a receiver in another room. WeC can be activated by performing a pre-programmed gesture. Antennas can be tuned to individual users, allowing up to five people to perform gestures in the same room. WeC is a breakthrough technology in gesture recognition as it does not require the user to be in the same room as the device or receiver.